Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elevate Phoenix 101, our very first ever live stream podcast. We are so excited to have you guys join us and to learn all things Elevate Phoenix. So here goes your Elevate Phoenix 101. So buckle up. You're about to learn more than you ever had in a long time. So thank you guys for joining us. And we want to actually introduce to you the team. So my name is Jasmine Hall, and I am the development director of Elevate Phoenix. My name is Dalila Gamper, and I serve as the executive director for Elevate Phoenix. What's up, everybody? My name is Amanda Covarrubias. Yes, it's 11 letters long, and I am the education coordinator. Thanks for hanging with us. Oh, man, we are super excited to share just a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do it. So... We have an amazing event that we throw every year to help bring the awareness. And every year people are asking us, hey, what is it exactly that you guys are celebrating? So before we jump into all things Elevate Phoenix, I figured maybe you guys want to know a little bit about what we did last year in raising our first million dollar event. So let's do a real quick recap of what last year looked like for our fifth annual Elevate Phoenix Invitational hosted by Tom Lehman. Take a look. Hey, this is Tom Lehman. I'm so excited about the sixth annual Elevate Phoenix Invitational to be held on November 20th and 21st at the Phoenix Country Club. Our 60 year is gonna be one of the best ever. And so I sure hope you can join either in person or even live streaming if you can't get a ticket. Uh, tickets are pretty close to being sold out, so you may wanna check fast. And you can check by going on 2022epi.givesmart.com. So 2022epi.givesmart.com. Now we raise money for all those great kids who we would consider to be underprivileged, at risk, disadvantaged in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, our theme this year is Elevate Celebrates, a night of gratitude, and we truly are grateful for all the great things we've seen happen for these kids, for all the things that will happen, and for the people like you who, who work so hard and donate and are so generous to make it happen. So anyway, so we have some great auction items. We have great golf. We have great food. It should be a great evening. Elevate Celebrates, a night of gratitude. Thank you very much. God bless you. So here is the exciting thing, you guys. That's our sixth annual Elevate Phoenix Invitational hosted by Tom Lehman happening November 20th and November 21st. We have a gala and we have a golf tournament. And the cool part about it is that we're even going to be having a virtual live stream watch party. That is being sponsored by Bonfire, Craft Kitchen, and Tap House. Thank you so very much, David, for hosting that. We are super excited and cannot wait to have everybody join us. It is a little too late at this point to try to join us in person because we are a sold out of it. Yes. yes. But it's never too late to join us virtually. And that link is going to be live right here. You're going to be able to join us. You can go to our website and you can be a participating right now with our auction is turned on. So, nice. okay, you guys, let's jump in. So let's talk a little bit about who is Elevate Phoenix, what we are all about, and how do people know what this thing is all about. Miss D, you yes. are our executive director. And what people don't know was the very first teacher mentor to get this whole thing started in Arizona. Give yes. us a little bit of background. Yeah, so such a privilege to still be a part of Elevate Phoenix. And this organization is just, it tugs at my heart. This is why I'm here. So just to give a little background of who Elevate Phoenix is. So our mission is to build long-term life-changing relationships with urban youth. And so with that, our 
space and our, and our avenue to create change is with relationships. And so that's what we do with our youth. So with that, we teach character qualities, life skills, and leadership development. And we do life with our kids. So it is we do the good, the bad, the ugly, the ups, the downs. We are coming alongside our kids to make sure that they are successful in the spaces and the ways that they want to be in life so that they don't get caught up in this urban space, in this world that can pull and tug and have obstacles. We give them what they need and support so that they can move past that and make change generationally, not just for themselves, but for their families, for the community and for generations to come. So that's a little bit of the overview um, of what we do or who we are, I should say. What we do, I'm gonna let Amanda take a little bit of the logistics of what we do. Love it. Yes, so how does that change happen? Here's how. We start by going where kids are. So Mm. kids are in high schools. We have an accredited elective class called Peer Leadership. Right now we're in three schools and soon to be four. And it's within PX2. Yes, you're right. Let's celebrate that, not skip over that part. Mm -hmm. So we are on, we're growing. So with those schools, they are Chavez, Cesar Chavez High School, Camelback High School, Maryville High School. And we'll let you know what the third one is the night of the event. Or the fourth one. You better show up. Yes. (laughs) So with that elective class we have teacher mentors our teacher mentors are our hands and feet and really heart of our program as they are the ones that are in the field with students speaking of we have mr j what's up mr j what's up can you hear me yeah we can hear you yeah you're in thanks for for joining us so mr j will share a little bit in a second about more parts of Elevate, but he is actually one of our site managers at Maryville High School. So he serves as a lead there, a teacher mentor. So he is with kids every single day. So he teaches a leadership curriculum day in, day out, takes them through a certified leaders training, preps those kids to give back. So with that give back, they go and program, they deliver the program at the feeder elementary schools by going down once a week and teaching a character quality life skill lesson. Mm. And they're actually part of that creation as well. So they are figuring out, hey, how do we want, so let's put ourselves in the shoes of the little ones. How do we want to, would we want to receive um, a a lesson on positive work ethic? Mm -hmm. Like, what does that even mean to a little one? How can we break that down in a way they can understand Mm -hmm. that is also fun? So they go down, do the program with those kids every day or every week, once a week, becoming that mentor. So that means they're being held accountable to what they're learning, which is things like, hey, how do you put things first? First things first. Um, How do you become more proactive and less reactive? Mm -hmm. So they're putting that thing, those things into practice as they're actually teaching those little ones every single week. And so Mr. that's Matt, our kiddos you program. That we're in four high schools, but how many elementary schools are we in? So we are in four. We'll be in four. Yes. We're in three right now. We'll be in that four. We're not going to mention. We're keeping that secret so till the night of the right. event. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> night of the event. You got to show yeah. up so that you can know where we're headed next. Yes. And so the last part of program is MVP. So MVP is our junior high program. So seventh and eighth graders, they actually get taught by a staff. So kiddos, I forgot to mention, is actually second all the way to sixth with a soft touch on occasion all the way down to kinder. So once those kids get to seventh and eighth grade, they actually get a teacher mentor similar to Mr. J, who is stationed at that school every day teaching those seventh and eighth graders these same lessons amazing lessons, building on and learning what it means to have a direct mentor and prepping them for high school. That way, none of the kids fall through the cracks, but they actually get connected to the high school team so that they can go on to high school and then graduate. So I won't get into all the good parts of graduation statistics, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's coming all later. That, We're talking about that later. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just get so excited. I, I can't wait. I just want to cover it's everything. <laughs> so no, so, I mean, 
that's right on point. I mean, we have all these things that we're talking about, right? So if we say that we're in the schools 24 hours a day, seven days a week, well, we're a teacher, which gives us the perfect platform mm -hmm. to earn the right to do life with our kids 24-7. Yes. But in the classroom, we're teaching those 13 character qualities. We have a different type of core beliefs that we want to make sure that our kids are filling. And so they're getting real life curriculum that is useful, but what really makes this a tangible uh, uh, transformation, if you will, is that they have one caring adult that is really pouring into lives of all of our kids. So Jay, do you want to actually tell us a little bit about, you know, what they do within that 24 seven over the summer in the weekend? What do you think? Yes, I could talk about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so over summer, you want to know about summer programs? Yeah. Tell me about summer camp. So, summer camp yes. on. So Miss Amanda uh, covered some good stuff with what we do in our day to day. And actually, we just uh, took our kids to go teach this past. We've been there maybe three times. So Maryville to Borman, uh, we've been teaching. We did a lesson on courage to our uh, fifth graders, which is really awesome. The cool thing, too, I would say with with the program and why I like Elevate, love Elevate so much and have been a part of it for a long time is I see it. Um, it is we get to have it we're just in the community so much within the schools mm -hmm. where when we go see those second and third graders eventually they'll be in our uh fourth grade classes when we go teach fifth grade and then me and a, a another teacher uh mr g who i teach with uh we did some classes for junior high and uh we got to see the upcoming uh the eighth graders who will eventually be over with us as freshmen so it's really cool getting to see it I, i've had kids that are were fourth graders, fifth graders, and eventually I taught them in my freshman class, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So you're just building relationships with uh, the kids at the school, their their um, their families, and then even just the elementary school. Uh, but what's really cool is we also go in, into the summer as well. And in the summer, uh, we do a three week, it's been, uh, yeah, about three weeks. So we have Borman, uh, which, feeds into Maryville and then Bernard Black that uh can you guys hear me on here? Yes, it's a little okay. static. I'm not it's sure why, static. but that's right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I can still hear you. Uh, yeah, so then we have uh Bernard Black uh elementary junior you know that feeds into Chavez and then uh Loma Linda and then I think Gateway where we're utilizing that goes into to Camelback. So we see these kids throughout the whole uh year and do the lessons with them, but we're also like, hey we want to provide a free program for you as well in the summer. There's a lot of times the kids are just chilling there uh, at home, not much to do uh, as parents work. And we want to provide something that's like, hey, send your kids over here where not only are they going to get fed, uh, but they're also going to uh, boost their reading scores up with Mayon, which is really, really awesome. That allows our students to get on and, and to uh, read and, and help boost their, um, their reading scores. And then um, they, there's a bunch of games they could play. There's gym, health and fitness. Uh, they're learning how to, to work in teams, how to compete um, through games and different stuff. They have art, a lot of cool stuff. It's, it's, it's definitely one of the highlights that the kids always remember. And the cool thing is we get our staff from each pipelines and students, high school students as well to come and volunteer and run those rotations, those different uh, classes for the kids. And it's it's awesome. It's one of the, the highlights of the summer. Love it. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Mr. J. Like one of the things that I love about what we do is this this, this whole cool uh, flow, right? It's just, it's just it's a cycle, right? So if I heard right how Ms. D kind of brought it all together and Ms. And Ms. Amanda kind of talked, you know, we have, this this platform of our our class that's an actual accredited elective class mm -hmm. and kids get to show up every day because they need that grade and they mm -hmm. go down and our our newbie class our i'm sorry our freshman classes they teach that second and third graders mm -hmm. and then our our newbie class they teach our fourth graders and then our vets class teaches our fifth graders and then our advanced class teaches our sixth graders but a staff that teach the seventh and eighth graders who have that little soft touch with the kinder and first, 
So by the time they get to eighth grade, that's our new freshman class. So mm -hmm. I love the way this is looking. And, mm -hmm. you know, one thing that we're going to talk about next after we get back from break is that we literally have such amazing statistics and all of our kids leave with a program. So if people did not uh, see any of our thankful Thursdays that we've been putting out every Thursday, we want to do a little recap now. Um, and you're going to get to hear a little a bit about a thankful Thursday with Stacy, one of our alumni who actually went through the college uh, track. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and let you hear a little bit about Stacy. My name is Stacy Flannery and I am part of the Elevate Phoenix alumni. I've been involved with Elevate Phoenix for the last 10 years. I came into the program my junior year of high school. I was really unsure of what the future held for me, and I definitely wasn't thinking about college. I was able to participate in Elevate Phoenix's RISE program and have my first taste at college, something that I never thought was possible. As a first generation college attendee, this was super important to me. I received a full ride scholarship to Arizona State University, where I received my bachelor's in criminology and criminal justice. College can be really challenging, but I had my Elevate Phoenix mentors there every step of the way to encourage me and guide me through any of the tough times I was going through. I graduated at the top of my class, magna cum laude, in three years. I was so excited to start giving back to the program that poured so much into me. I interned for Elevate Phoenix during college, and I even worked for them after college. This program truly changed my life. I don't know where I would be if I hadn't come into Elevate Phoenix my junior year of high school. Certainly, I never thought I would be here. Thank you so much for your investment into my life and the investment into so many others. Oh my gosh, you guys, like literally every single time I see our kids, it literally makes my heart smile, like straight up. Like this reminds me of my full why. But before we jump into our statistics and our results and our whys, you know, Miss D, can you give a little bit more of an explanation about our reading program and how we kind of have that a little bit further of a reach with our Mayan program? Absolutely. So for every elementary school that we get involved with, we want to extend as much support as we can to teachers, to the schools that we're in. So it's not just about us. It's not just about our program. We want to come alongside to help support in any way that we can. So with our younger, younger little babies in the elementary Hello. school, we want to be a help to them. And so helping support them in their literacy is everything. Because as you look at statistics, if they are not reading on grade level in third grade, that's where they start to create a pipeline to other places, not positive ones. And so we offer just a free um, program to those elementary school students that's a platform for reading. And so with MyOn, they, they have access to over 8,000 books. Um, they have a lot of different books that are in the Spanish language for our students and their families that speak Spanish. So it can help not only the students, but also their families. And so it's offered free to them. Um, they have access to it and as many books as they could possibly read. So we love to do the tangible where they get to take a book home, but how great is it that we get to offer over 8,000 books? Oh and God. so many of our kids are just so connected with technology and digitally that this is a perfect avenue for them to help increase their literacy. Love mm -hmm. that, love that. Thank you so very much. Um, you know, and I think what the, the best part is, we truly show, like you said, Ms. D, the tangibleness of these hard, these hard skills are just as important as the, the soft skills that they're learning with that life skills, leadership development, character development. But all these things help encompass the statistic that we're having. So like Miss Amanda, I know you talked about all the kids and, and how we've grown from like 35 kids being the first pipeline and now we're servicing over 5,000 kids. Wow. What does the stats tell us? Like, what has our history, can you give us a little bit of our history of what that looks like? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So that <laughs> sure, yeah. So as far as when we started, um, when we started, it was a fifty-two percent dropout rate. Mm, that's crazy. right of all kids coming through the Phoenix Union High School District. Now I want to make it clear that this is not our organization that we do love so much just coming in and trying to save, make, uh, saying we're better than people in the district. We're coming in and saying, how can we help? Mm -hmm. How can we support what they're already doing? Because there are quality teachers in PXU with beautiful hearts. But for the reason that all of us on here got into this position is because we want to address the whole child we want to help the family. We want to help the community. And so with that, as we bring come up with that one caring adult to walk alongside a kid and bring that mentoring, um, the mentoring and just really helping kids find out who they are, right, in the midst of these crazy years where they're trying to figure life out as teenagers going through all these changes. So as we come alongside and do that, now Elevate Phoenix has a 98% graduation rate. 98%. Yes. Isn't that crazy? That's so a lot. Awesome. I mean, that I think is the a lot. school district, I mean, as a whole, they're graduating like 74%. So for us mm-hmm. to have these kids being ready to drop out at 52%, turn around, and not only are they first generational high school grads, but they're graduating at 98%. Miss Amanda, that's phenomenal. Like, it's, it's this yes, is real life. we're, this we're is changing. Life. We're changing cycles. That's Honestly, right, yes. we are changing cycles. Um, we're showing kids that hey, you can do it. Here are the options. You have more than just this option. Like, let let us give you these opportunities and enhance your vision so that it shifts your paradigm. So you can see from a new perspective and you can believe not just because you have it in you, but also because you have people like us believing in you. So, yeah, I, I hands down love it. And the other thing that I love is that um, I look back and a lot of us do, right. We look back at ourselves in high school and we say, dang, I wish I would have had someone to like, show me I'm a first gen college, uh, college attendee and graduation graduate. And that was because, I went to the army right after high school, which Mm -hmm. is also another track that is honorable and Mm -hmm. and necessary. And we do also promote that. But I did that because I didn't know I had other options. Yeah. And so I like to tell kids, hey, there's so many tracks you can do. And because of that, we have a 100 percent post-secondary plan as far as our rate goes. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Kids are figuring out again with our one on ones that we sit down with kids and we say, hey, let's look at where your strengths and your skills cross with your passion and let's identify what's next for you or at least help you figure out these steps to get there. So I love that personally. I can talk all day about um, post-secondary, but let's go to the next thing, Miss <laughs> Jazz. Okay, no, no, I think I think you're so right on point with that, Miss Amanda, because once these kids graduate, we've told them that's phenomenal. This is this is like Absolutely. great, great success, but it's not where it ends. Matter of fact, I think it was Miss D who said, You can't tell me you don't like your broccoli until you at least try it. Mm-hmm. So when our kids go on, we tell them, <laughs> Hey. We say, hey, try on college. Yes. If you if, if it's for you, we'll help you find more scholarships. Yes. It's not that. And not all of our kids are college bound. And, and that's okay. But mm-hmm. what about that trade or certificate? Or what about the military or armed forces? But most importantly, what about the workforce? Because at one level or another, all of our kids are literally doing a combination of all those, right? Absolutely. So... You know, we can talk about our whys all day long, but one thing I wanted is just to ask, Mr. J, I know we're going to have to go to break here in like a couple minutes, but they've seen our why as a trio of last year, and it's on our YouTube, so if you have it, you guys got to check that out. But Mr. J, can you just share really quick, what is your why? Why do you do what you do as a teacher mentor for Elevate? Um, well, I had... Actually, uh, Dalila's brother was one of my mentors when I was in high school. And just having somebody, uh, my parents were were there too, and and that was somebody I could talk to them too, but having someone else 
uh, like a mentor just to help me with my, like you said too, Jazz, like there's more than just like academics as a student, right? It's just a holistic, there's all like my emotions, um, my well-being, everything. And to have someone check in on me on that, that was huge for me. Um, so I see a lot of students now, even all these students that, that, um, that I've had over the years, and to be able to just have, be another option for them, um, to just talk to them about what's going on. Hey, how are you doing today? It means, it means like the world to them. Mm -hmm. And to be able just to, to process not just school, but their emotions, uh, different things that are going on at home. Uh, it, it's, I want to see just generational change. And it's, it's cool to see that when something just clicks for them, and they're like, oh, I, I don't have to do what so-and-so did before my brother or even my parents. I can change something for my own family and, and my own kids. And it's cool to see doing it over 11 years already. It's or about this is my 11th. It's cool just to see kids now that I have their 24 years old and they've graduated college. They're even parents now and married. Me and Jazz actually taught together as well. So seeing Stacy. Um, was one of our students and seeing where they're at now, like that, that's my why is just to see, even some of them don't get it right away and it's okay. We're there with them throughout the whole process. And then they come back and they're like, Oh, Mr. J, this is what you were saying. Not that we know everything, but it, sometimes it clicks for them a little bit later. And I, I just like being that it's long-term life changing. Like what it says, it, it's really true. We walk with them and, and I enjoy getting to see when it, it just clicks and them live out in their live in their purpose. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. I said a lot. So. No, nope, it's good. <laughs> it's good. I think just being able to have the TMs and the staff be in a space where we've all been where our kids are. And so just to be in, to understand where they come from, what we wish we would have had growing up, what the lack of that was, and looking at the positive, the assets that we had too, just being able to add on to that is everything. And so because we come from that space, we can understand it to be able to give what we didn't have or to provide something that we did have that maybe our kids don't in this urban space. So, so that good. That's so, so good. Thank you, Ms. D. So before we jump into talking about our growth, let's hear another thankful Thursday. Like I said, I want to highlight all of the tracks. We said we have 100% a post-secondary plan. We got to hear from Stacy, who took the college track. Well, now I want you guys to hear, just in case you missed it, let's learn about Danny, who took the trades path. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Daniel Durazo, and I'm currently 25 years old. When I started at Kalanbeck High School, I was wandering around pretty lost I found myself in a really delicate situation where I had to manage to live on my own because I had nobody here, no parents or family. I was pretty lost until halfway through my freshman year. I was interested in some class they called Elevate Phoenix. Turns out it was just more than the classroom. It became a family and... <laughs> After high school, instead of going to college, I went down to trade school. I can't thank my family enough for being there for me every day where I can find myself in a difficult situation. I know who to reach out to. I'm literally not going to stop working through any trades I can until I can accomplish my goals because anything is possible if you put your mind to it. You just have to go down the right path and know the right people. I can't thank you more than enough for investing in us. You guys, I seriously, every single time, it catches me each time. Every single time, it like literally brings me to tears. Jay, you remember Danny, and now he's over there doing big things. I like, I, he sends me pictures, and he's like, uh, high, high ladder, like putting framing together, and building houses. I'm like, dude, quit taking pictures, stay safe. <laughs> our heart, I mean, and, and it's, our, these alumni, it makes me so excited, because once they get through this post-secondary plan, 
they're coming back and they're becoming our alumni who are giving back to the same space we just came out of. And we are hiring them as interns. We actually hire directly out of our own pipeline. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just so beyond grateful. So when we start talking here right now about growth, this is what comes to mind. You know, it's the the Stacys, the Thedes, the, you know, the Ashleys, you know what I mean? Like, you know, D, I know you you talked about, you know, the first class starting back in 2010, having our first actual, actual class. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the growth that we are, like kind of how we grew organically okay. and then now where we're trying to grow to. Absolutely. So in the first class, we started off with 35 kids. So, and I want to say it was maybe even a few less than that. We were yeah. trying it out. Yep. We were, I, and, I, and I'm thinking through, cause I think through friends and everything too, because they come alongside and we're like, sure, let's, we got enough room. We got enough love for you too. So in our actual class, I want to say there were actually 28 students. We had some other students, yep, around with them, like their friends and things. And so starting off with that very first class in the spring semester of 2010 and just organically growing in the sense of we never want to take on more than we can handle so that every kid has a place, they have a mentor that's intentional with them. And so that's been our big thing. You know, we could just have classes like from the beginning till the end of school day, but we want to be intentional with those students that we have and make sure they have, you know, everything that they need. So starting off there, we have moved from one school into three high schools and then also three elementary feeder schools, K-8 schools that feed into that. Um, and so starting there and then having us reach about 5,000 kids annually. So that's what we're covering right now. And then just from here to date, looking at all of our babies from K all the way through 12th grade and beyond, we've we've serviced and been of service to over 20,000 students and their families. And so it's been amazing. That's that's just the beginning. We're not even in all the schools that we want to be in. And so just looking at that, we want to look where we are serving approximately 20,000 annually you know, on the, on the daily. And so looking at that big goal, it may seem like a lot, but it's doable. You look at from that 28, that first class of 28 to servicing 5,000 kids annually right now, it is doable. So without the help of everyone that comes alongside and partners with us, and that's what we want to be to our school systems. We are not coming in trying to take over anything. It's about our program. It's not, it's coming alongside the teachers coming alongside the schools, coming alongside the parents and coming alongside the community to make an impact. That's so, so that's what cool. we're out for. No, I, I love that. And, 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 you know, I, I think that the, the big thing is with us being partners with the biggest school district in Phoenix, mm -hmm. Phoenix Union High School District, it already services well over 30,000 students annually. Yeah. And so if we take a look out of all the schools that the Phoenix Union has, mm -hmm. I want to say about, what is it, like 11 or so that are Title 11. I? Mm -hmm. 11? There's, oh. there's a lot that are Title I, but we're looking at the 11 largest schools so that yeah. we can make the biggest impact. So the 11 largest schools in Phoenix Union, and we're at three right now. We're going into four. I won't, we won't spoil the surprise of which one that is. Um, but our goal at the end of the day is to hit 11 of those schools. And with that come 11 elementary school districts um, of the K-8 schools that we service. So we're looking at long-term impact just within the, the student first, then it goes into the school, it goes into the home, into the communities, and into the city as a Phoenix as a whole. Man. So when we think about the type of impact, we know there's a lot of great programs out there. And what makes us really unique is that we are more than just a mentorship program where you can spend an hour to once a week or twice a week. We literally mean it when we're saying we're there every single day, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And so we come free to the school. So A, we'll never get cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then the other part is we can do exactly what you just said, Miss D, is is really strengthen the partnership. So we know we're not the least expensive program out there, 
And that is truly why we are one that works. I mean, it takes with us servicing right around 5,000, just over 5,000 students right now, it takes only $429 to impact the life of one student for an entire school year. And I mean, if you think about it, I know the Phoenix Union, they said in the state of Arizona, what was it, D? It was like 12,000. Mm. It was just like over $12,000 a student. So yeah. that's still an amazing ROI. Your return on your investment with our kids helping elevate, partnering with Elevate, investing in our kids is truly one that we'll see true growth from. So mm -hmm. right now, we know that people can turn around and not only help us to sustain what we currently have, but we're going to keep on growing. Yes. 500 students every year. Now that will be a whole new look for Arizona as a whole. Yes. Mm -hmm. Man. It's very exciting. I mean, you know, I know we have a couple minutes before we have to go back to break, but Miss Amanda, tell me what is your why? Like, why do you do what you do? Well, let me try to just do it in a couple of minutes. <laughs> so I'm actually from Phoenix, born and raised. Um, I grew up in the Maryville area. And my why is I want to change the community because I know what I grew up seeing. I know um, having family members who you know went straight to jail a couple of times, recidivism. Um, I saw other family members make some really poor choices um, involving drugs, gangs, prostitution, all of that. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that for our future, for our kids, right? For my kids, for all the kids in the city. I want to see them to grow up and become more. I want to see them grow up and become our educators, our doctors, our policymakers, the president. Like, I want to see things change. So in that big picture, I thought, okay, how do I, how do I create change? And so one kid at a time, yeah. one kid at a time, one one-on-one -on -one at a time. If I can pour into this one kid, help them identify and encourage and call out even those good things in them, that treasure they have, mm -hmm. they're going to start to believe it in themselves yeah. and that belief is going to be their motivation to do more right? right and then we come up alongside them and say here's the opportunities like here's the opportunities you choose and we will help you get there and right. so that creates change mm -hmm. so that's yeah. that's my why <laughs> and boy is it a good why i tell you you guys i get to work alongside these amazing people every single day it's very rare you get to wake up and say i am living out my purpose my passion my calling and i mean this is it right here yeah. we are literally walking and living out what we know to be who we are so mm -hmm. at the end of the day we came alongside and are having the same mission. So when Elevate Phoenix said we deliver, we our mission is to deliver long-term, life-changing relationships with our urban youth. We've all lived that and did that for free for mm -hmm. all of our lives. So it's it's mm -hmm. really like we get to like work with our families. So this is yeah. such a unique um, organization that I've mm -hmm. never seen such transformation the way I do with this. Mm -hmm. And as we get to continue talking about what we do and the partnerships we have and even get to hear from our board member here soon, I get to I get to really sit back and think about, you know, um, we can't do these things alone. And and it takes our special partners, our corporate partners, our board members, our collaborators, our schools. I mean, literally in it is a village that is helping to transform the lives of these kids so Absolutely. as we go ahead and oh yeah go ahead to see yeah and i'm just saying this is the heartbeat of what we do our folks our people this is this is not just a job it's a calling mm -hmm. right and so out of that calling 
we are able to just delve in and love students well, love their families well, love the communities that we all are a part of. And so that's the, what resonates with Elevate. That's, that's who we are. That is so, so, so good. No. And um, before we come back in and thank the people for doing what we do and talking about uh, our next event, I want to bring up um, our next thankful Thursday where we're going to get to hear about um, the the Air Force and, and the military track from Malachi. So if you haven't got a chance, take a look now. Hey, Elevate Phoenix family, Jasmine Hall, Development Director of Elevate Phoenix. We are so excited to continue sharing about our Thankful Thursdays, about all of our alumni who have taken different paths. And today, you're about to hear from a young man by the name of Malachi, and he has taken the path of military and armed forces. I can't wait for you to hear his story. Matter of fact, he's just joining in. Let's go. Yes, I got you. <laughs> well, Malachi, as you know, as I shared, we want to highlight you on our Thankful Thursdays and talk about our alumni who has taken the path of military. So if you don't mind, just share with us a little bit about who you are, how you got into our program, a little bit about the impact Elevate has made for you, and then your path over there with the military and share what branch and all that fun stuff that you're in. It's been amazing. I've been in for 36 months, so three years. I'm actually going to be a senior airman, which is an E4. Congratulations. Um, it's it's given me a lot of opportunities that a lot of people at my rank won't have. So I got to fly in helicopters, um, support nuclear convoy missions. Um, I get to repel a lot. Um, like, so anything that has to do with like nuclear security, I, I pretty much have done. In 2015, I was a freshman, which is crazy to think about. I know, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I walked into class. They had like a huge circle going. It looked like an intervention. I was like, I was like, what is going on here? And they're like, take a seat. And they were just, inter everybody was introducing themselves. And I think from there, you know, like, I just knew it. Like, it was, I, like, I, I belong there. It really took a, key development of who I am because it, it's not just all oh, my senior I was in that class or my junior to senior it was like freshman all the way to the end it's it's been more impactful than I really thought it would I actually still keep in contact with Mr. Chavez, Mr. Moss, Moses, uh, Mr. Amanda like all I still keep in contact with all of them so they, they it's not just a one-year thing or two-year thing it's like if you really want to connect with, with the mentors that you have, like they're really there. A lot of people in our age will try to figure out everything before they're 21, 22, 23. Like you have more more time, like than than we think we have. Um, we don't need to have everything figured out right now. So just, just try a lot of things. I'm only 21. I'm still trying to try different things. Like I'll be getting out next year. I'll be doing real estate. All right. Uh, so yeah, and I'll be going to school full time as well. I love it. I love it. Well, we are so grateful and so honored, not only that you've gone through our program, not just that you're our alumni, but for your service. We are so grateful. And so thank you to you and thank you to all of our, you know, supporters who have invested in people like you and all of our kids. We're just so grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Man, it was so awesome getting to see Malachi. He just came back in to visit when he, because, you know, he's deployed. Where is he at, Miss Amanda? What, North? North he's North in North Dakota. North Dakota. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got to celebrate him and take him to our loft and just tell him how much we are honored just to have him around. And this is, again, you know, when we said we have our students who are, 100% have a post-secondary plan. These are the type of things we're talking about. Casey going into college, 
Danny going to the trades, Malachi going into the military. I can't wait for our last one, but before we get there, before we go there, you know, I just wanted to honor and thank everybody because we couldn't do what we do without the support of people like our board members. So here we actually got one of our development board members, Miss Jill Stride. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi, Jill. Hey, Jill. Oh, I'm hi. liking the hat. We're twinning over here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jill, um, we would love for you to share a little bit about who you are, why you chose to be an Elevate Phoenix board member, but also share a little bit about the versatile golf and, and your ownership of that. You bet. Well, I'm I'm very thankful to say I'm actually at Phoenix Country Club right now oh. for the Charles Schwab Cup Championship. So I'm checking out, making sure the ballroom is all set, the flowers are all done uh, for the EPI next weekend. Everything here is looking great. And boy, the golfers and the celebrity am, I don't think I've ever seen the golf course in this good a shape. So we're uh, we're going to have a great couple of days next week. So I'm, it's really exciting to be here, kind of the calm before the storm. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, my, my love for Elevate Phoenix was unexpected. Um, it was something that literally came out of nowhere. Um, in 2016, I was referred to it. Um, Tom Lehman called me, which as a girl that's been playing golf since I was seven and I get a phone call from Tom Lehman, like pick me up off the floor. <laughs> and it was just, he said, I want to tell you about this organization that, I am a founding board member of, and this is what it's all about. Um, and I said, okay, it sounds great. And by the way, I need you to meet this girl named Jasmine Hall. And for everybody who's watching, who knows who Jasmine Hall is, she comes in like the thunder. And I'm telling you, um, it was love at first sight with her. She, it's her passion for Elevate Phoenix and everybody, you know, Jay, Dalila, Amanda, everybody at Elevate Phoenix. I've just never been around a group of people that I don't think you got, I don't even think your faces can make a frown, even if you tried. Um, but just the, the, the positive energy around this group. Um, and in that first year, we had four months to put on the first Elevate Phoenix Invitational that and tripled what Tom was hoping to make. Um, you know, back in 2020, we were able to bring a one hour live stream and give everybody a break from the, from the crazy and still raise $600,000. Yeah. That um, pandemic was in bananas. Uh, right? so was the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I am not made for live television. Um, you got this. But no, it's, it's just been so special. And, you know, as the years got on and I learned more, I met more, uh, I met Stacy and I met Camille and Brian and, and you just meet all these kids that have absolutely no reason to smile. And, you know, even just these thankful Thursdays where I, I watched Stacy's again, the, a couple days ago, just, just to hear her speak again, cause she's so brilliant and eloquent. And it's like, wow, knowing her, more of her backstory and then listening to where she is now. Um, with Versatile Golf, you know, I get I am very fortunate that I get to work with a lot of nonprofits in and outside of Arizona. And when I tell people about Elevate Phoenix, the very first thing that I say to every single one of them, there's nothing else like it. And there's not. I don't care if you're curing a disease. I don't care if you're trying to help people coming out of a hurricane. There is nothing like what Elevate Phoenix does. And the part about it that got me hooked um, to want to be more involved and to be blessed to be now a development board member is that the results are there. It is tangible. It's not, oh, could you please donate to our fundraiser? It's going to go into our general fund. No, everything is earmarked. Every dollar has a purpose. And you know, the fact that it's grown since I've started six years ago into a new high school and more high schools down the road, which means more junior highs, more elementary schools, more kids, and even just how infectious it is for the, the students that get to experience the class. Mm -hmm. And then they talk to their friends and they talk to their families. And it's so the numbers don't even really do it justice as to how much and what you've done. Don't even get me started to the crazy you guys were dealing with during the pandemic 
right? I mean, you were bringing a graduation ceremony to people's driveways and yeah. making sure that kids had internet signal in their homes and devices because some of them couldn't afford a device so that they could still go to school. And they yeah. were invested. It wasn't like, well, it's, you know, it's the pandemic. I now have an excuse not to graduate. These kids were so inspired by what the teacher mentors do at all of the schools that they made sure they were get, they were checking in online. They made sure they were not missing their classes. And everybody at Elevate, boy, I mean, all the way from Dr. G, the superintendent, all the way down to even, I mean, last year, the, the security officer got an award from Elevate Phoenix mm -hmm. because even though you are one class and not every student, which is unfortunate, every student should go through peer leadership. <laughs> <laughs> but just to see that you guys are one piece of these large schools and you're you are inf infecting people that are behind the scenes at a school that have nothing to do with what's going on in the classroom. So for me, it, I mean, it was it wasn't even a sell. It was a done deal. What do you need? And the good thing is that's what happens with these these organizations that come in and learn about Elevate Phoenix and Jasmine, Dalila and Amanda. I know you take them on tours of the schools. It just, it doesn't take much to get it because your results are so tangible. Yeah. So it's, you know, the fact that I've, I've had you guys in my life for six years, I can absolutely tell you, you have transformed my life uh -huh. and don't, and you know, some, everybody on the, on this call or watching doesn't know that I have a little girl named Savannah and at 10 <laughs> years old, <laughs> she, <laughs> Right. No, but at 10 years old, she had to decide what she wanted to do for a career for a school project. And at 10 years old, she says, I want to be a teacher mentor for Elevate Phoenix. So it, it really is. It, it, I mean, you guys, seriously, I laugh about it all the time. And I say you guys have magic pixie dust, but you do. You just do. No, that's a perfect, uh, you know, even perfect. I know we're going to have to break into another, um, um, finish our, our last thankful Thursday, but Jill, you talked about our Elevate Celebrates when during pandemic, that's where it kind of stemmed from. We still wanted our graduates to feel celebrated. So we said Elevate Celebrates. And so we actually adopted that back for our sixth annual Elevate Phoenix Invitational hosted by Tom Lehman that's coming up. November 20th and 21st. And we are a sold out event, PSM yes. by the way. But people mm -hmm. could still participate in this entire process by being a part of the live stream. Joe, can you talk a little bit about the auction that people can jump into even right this moment? I would, it'd be my pleasure. So I'm happy to say the silent auction was, actually is already on and bids are already coming in. So if everybody goes to 2022epi.givesmart.com, or you can just go directly to elevatephoenix.org and it'll take you directly into the site, uh, you'll see the preview of our insane live auction items. We've got VIP tickets to the Ryder Cup. We've got a luxury Sonoma wine trip. It's, I mean, you want to play golf with Alice Cooper? Go on to the website. So it's, uh, it's pretty special, but yeah, the silent auction has already started. And the nice thing is, is that it's going to be going on live and you can bid, give you, give the site to your friends. You don't have to be in Arizona. You just have to be looking. And the cool part is, is that even if you're out bid, you'll get a message to your phone. So if there, if you really got to go play true North, you can keep bidding, bidding, bidding until you get it. We've got amazing artwork of Larry Fitzgerald by one of our hope holders. We've got rounds of golf. We've got spa treatments. It's, I mean, we've got some memorabilia by uh, Rory McElroy, Colin Marikawa, of course, Tom Lehman, a master's flag from Mark O'Mara, who is also a friend of Elevate Phoenix. It's for everybody. Uh, but again, just go to 2022epi.givesmart.com. Um, the silent auction will close on Sunday evening. The live auction you can watch on the live stream. And if there's something, if you just need to go to Sonoma and drink wine for four days in a five diamond <laughs> resort, guess what? You can call us and we will take your bids over the phone. 
Yeah. Love, love, love that. Thank you so much. Once again, you guys, Jill Strite with Versatile Golf, who also is our development director. I mean, sorry, de uh, <laughs> development <laughs> board member. Yeah. Development <laughs> board member. You, you were so jazzy. You can't talk anymore. It was coming. It was coming. <laughs> I wouldn't. We just call jazz, her family. That's even, why. We just call her Jasmine, family. That's why. <laughs> I don't even want to attempt to fill your shoes. So don't give me your job. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, thank you. So, you guys, um, as we're about to wrap up here, we wanted to share our last and final um, thankful Thursday where we're going to get to hear mm -hmm. from Brian, who did the mm -hmm. workforce and Brian's very own teacher mentor with Miss D. And all of us actually have a relationship with Brian. Brian is that yep. special kind of guy. He's yep. going to be in the room. You're not going to want it. You're going to see him on the live stream. But let's take a quick look of his thankful Thursday as he shares about the workforce. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, everybody. See you at the club. Hey, LV Phoenix family. We are so excited to have you apart once again. We're about to hear an amazing story about Brian and his path to the workforce. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Hi guys, my name is Brian Marguelles. I'm an alumni. I was part of Elevate Phoenix my sophomore year. And yes, I was that troublemaker kid at one point, giving the class disruption day in and day out. Luckily, I had great mentors such as Dee, who was trying to just teach me the right things to do. Um, and things really started turning for me once I had to go and actually teach the same skills that I was learning in my peer mentorship class to the young ones. They would look up to me like if I was Michael Jordan, or LeBron James. I have now since then graduated and I decided to take my path into the workforce. With the help of Elevate, I pursued my career in mortgage and I've been very successful in, in the real estate industry. I've been able to pursue my dream of helping others in my career by not just offering opportunity to others to come into my workspace, but giving back to the same foundation that allowed me to follow my dreams. So we have the Opportunity Scholarship that, we, that we're that we giving back to, and we also have a lot of workshop events that we're doing to help our current alumni and many others that will benefit from what we're able to teach them. So a lot of things coming our way, man, we can never forget our investors that helped us make this all a reality. So thank you for everybody that supports Elevate Phoenix, because without you, none of this would have been, been achievable. So thank you again for your, for your support. If you thought that was amazing, you just wait. Show up to the event. Our gala is November 20th. That Sunday night, you're gonna hear the rest of Brian's amazing story. And when I tell you, have your tissues ready. It is something to be celebrated. All right, Elevate Phoenix family. We are now at the end of our very first virtual podcast and we could not have been so excited to have you join us, but Absolutely. this could not have been made possible without all of our sponsors. Um, I, we just really are super grateful to our Santan Ford um, and the Charles Schwab Cup for being our live stream sponsors. Yes, and the Gollies, the Golly Plastic Surgery. They've been such a blessing to us over the last couple of, a few years, actually. Yeah. Thank yes. you so much, Gollies. Yes. In addition to the Gollies, we wanted to thank Shasta Pools. They have donated our office space and the loft space for our students for the past 13 years from the beginning. They've been with us from the very beginning. So thank you so much, Shasta. And also to the Carlisle Companies. They have been a corporate sponsor and partner for Elevate Phoenix to help us do what we do. So we cannot do those things without you. Thank you. I think there was one more sponsor we yeah, cannot forget about. Yeah. 
That's a, yeah, Ray, Ray, Ray Barton. Barton. Oh yes. my Ray. gosh, Ray. Yes. Yeah. Ray has been so dynamic. He has literally been a, a top sponsor for our Father's Day match for a cause. He also he was just our title sponsor for Ann Myers Drysdale uh, Ward's luncheon. So yes. definitely thank you. And and let's not forget Bonfire, you guys. Yes. Bonfire is huge. Yes. Again, you guys. David, thank you so very much for sponsoring our virtual watch party. You guys, it's not mm -hmm. too late. Get in there. Make sure you are a part of the virtual watch party. You're not going to want to miss this. You are going to be inspired. And most of all, we're here to celebrate. Yes. yes. Woo -hoo. There you are, Jay. <laughs> there you are, Jay. <laughs> difficult well, this hey, this is our that. first one. Well, this is our first I mean, one. We're figuring yeah, we're it out. We're together. excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you. You are here with Jasmine Hall, Dalila Gamper, Amanda Covarubias, Jacob Mata, <laughs> and the LA Phoenix family. We love you. Thank you for what yes. you do. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Dude, I don't know what's, what's going on with my...